Hi everyone, welcome back to our second video in the series of how to install your own GRP roofing system from Composite Roof Supplies. In the last video we went through materials and tooling you would need to complete the job. Today we're going to look at uh, the roof deck and the requirements of your roof and hopefully installing our trims. So first off let's talk about the deck material. Now there's two kinds of timber you can use for your deck. You can either use OSB3, which is what I have here, or you can use plywood. Now the surface on OSB gives you a perfect bonding surface. Plywood doesn't. So if you're gonna use plywood, you're gonna to need to sand the whole thing down nice and rough before you can try to apply any resin. There's also two different kinds of OSB you could be using. I'm using eight by four sheets of square edge OSB. You can also use tongue groove OSB sheets, which come in 2400 by 600. Uh, the tongue groove is better, obviously, because you get your mating surface and there's no room for resin to drip down. If you're, if you're installing square edge, you're going to have to put expansion gaps of 3mm all the way around each board, which is going to mean there's potential for resin to drip down. But don't worry, that's not going to be a lot. And there's a few little things you could do to help prevent that. So you want to install your sheets at 90 degrees to the joist. Start at the front most accessible corner using a full sheet. You're then going to lay out all the full sheets that you can, making sure that on each second row you have half overlap. You're then going to measure and do your cuts. I gave myself a nice 10 centimeter overhang all the way around to trim off later. Okay, so there you have it. The deck is down. It's all spaced, a three millimeter gap for expansion. So in preparation for our roofing trims, what we've done is we've added uh, a batten all the way around the perimeter. Uh, my batten is 50 by 38. If your fascias are already on, you can get away with using simple two by one. But because my fascia is getting put on afterwards, I've given myself an extra 10 mil there. On the front, we've added an extra batten. Now this batten is for the drip trim because the drip trim is going to want to drip obviously into a gutter. It needs to push out that little bit further. Uh, and then obviously our OSB3 on top and it's flush cutted all the way around to the first batten. So let's see how those trims look. So here we've got a side profile. And you can see in place that fits there nicely. You've got a bonding point there. You're gonna nail it at the top and it comes down there nicely. Now for the front drip trim, you can see really, really good there. The purpose of dropping this second button down is to avoid this curve in here. And then if you see that, that's a good distance there. So water will drip nicely into our gutter. Now, if you look at the top of this trim, obviously these are a couple of mil thick. Uh, now you're not gonna want that little bump there uh, when you're matting. Even with the mat on top, you're still gonna get a little bump. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna plane two millimeter off the width of the, that face. So this will then sit flush with the rest of the roof. So as we previously mentioned, installing the front drip trim, it's gonna require us to rebate the OSB so the trim sits flush. Now how we're gonna do that is put the trim position, mark a line at the back, do the same, varying intervals all the way down your surface. Then we're going to join up those lines. Then we're going to use a planer to plane two millimeter depth in a single pass up to that line. Let's do that now. So 
so here we go if we take a look now you can see that trim is nice and flush okay so what i should probably mention is when we put the osb boards down we didn't screw down the front edges because we knew we were going to have to plane the bit off so now we're planed we can now screw down that front edge before attaching the trim okay so the first trim we're going to install is going to be our grip trim i've got our rebated slot so we're simply going to put it in place you can put blobs of adhesive um, down the front if you want it to hold in place but the flex on these is going to want to push away from that anyway so you're going to want to get some nails in it as soon as possible I'll show you so if we just sit it in place, you can see it wants to pull off. So we're going to want to push until it's nice and flush like that. So I recommend first finding the middle. going to use 20 millimeter clout nails sorry 13 millimeter clout nails it says that one fixed in place you can now check down the way and we're going to work from the middle outwards fixing at 20 centimeter intervals for the clout nails when it comes to our joins like this we're not going to put the trims up we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is give them a nice strong overlap. And then we're going to fix that there. Undoubtedly, you're going to get to a point where you're going to need to trim some off. So we're going to put it slightly in place. I'm going to mark for five centimetres and then we're going to need to trim this off. There's multiple ways you can do this. Some people use tin snips. I'm going to use a multi-cutter. Simply just going to trim all the way around. Watch how easy it cuts. Now if we go to the end, you can see how that trim sits on the edge. So it's flush here and it extends down nicely, curls round, plenty of room for my fascia in there and we've got a good distance here to drip into the gutter. So when it comes to attaching two curbs in the corner, 
what we're gonna have to do is mite that join. Now I found personally the best way for me to do that was get a block set up so our trim can go underneath, mark our 45s, I then put that on in place, come into this line which is the line we drew earlier. And then I lined up the back of the trim with the end of the line. And then wherever this line came out, I marked. So I know I've got a 45 to that point. What I did then, was using my square at 90, looking from above, I penciled lined down it, ensuring I could see the pencil line the whole time. And that's given me my 45 degree angle on that strange shaped surface. So we'll cut that and see how it looks. We're gonna to have to do the same on the little lip on the bottom. I've marked that out already. You don't need to be too precious with this because obviously we're going to bandage tape around that and it'll hide any um, little gaps or whatever as you go through. Now I'm going to need an extra piece on this end, so I'm not going to nail down from there onwards. Because of the slope of the roof is going that way, I want this piece to be on top of this piece. So now we've cut this end piece, you can see we've made it longer so it can slot under there. We've also cut our bottom lip at 45, and what we've done here is cut an angle so that corner doesn't sit against the edge. You'll see when it's in.
this was my first attempt at a drip to curb. See a bit messy here, not ideal. My first attempt at a mitre. I'll have to sand that little bit off and obviously when I bandage, that'll be lovely. But a second goes a much better. So this is a mitre, again, just a tiny sand on that edge. It's because I might run at 45, but then the, obviously the side ones don't quite sit flat. And then my drip on this side, a nice rounded edge on this one this time. This is lovely. This is a great time to give your deck a nice brush sweep and blow off in preparation for the next stage. So our deck and trims are now fully installed. So our next step is to bandage these joints and bandage between our trim and our OSB. There we go, so that is the end of the second video in the series. So now you have your deck fully installed uh, and your trims are also fitted. Now next we're gonna look at, so in the next video, we're gonna look at bandaging the joints between your OSB sheets and the trim to OSB. That'll seal all those gaps ready for us to install our chop strand matting. So, see you on the next one.